Hi, my name is Sarah Ball and welcome to Devoted. Today's topic is about identity lies that steal our joy. You know, from the time that we were born and were plucked from the thoughts of God into our parents' arms, we begin figuring, trying to figure out who we are. We look at our fingers, our toes, we stare at the world around us. And then when we become a child, we begin to add labels to it, like, Mom, am I pretty? Or am I smart? Or when I grow up, am I going to be a princess or an astronaut? And then when we become a teenager, this question, the who I am question, just begins to explode in us. And it actually begins to dictate our actions quite a bit. We want to fit in and we want to belong. We want to feel valued. And we're taught by the world that our value and identity comes from what we do or what we don't do, by what we've done right or what we've done wrong, or what others think of us, or what we have, or what we've achieved or what we failed at. And how we define ourselves by those things usually dictates how we respond to life. You know, if we feel like we're damaged goods, then we act like damaged goods. If we feel like we aren't smart enough or untalented enough, then perhaps we'll underachieve. If we think that we are God's gift to humanity, then we can just be like fluffed up with pride and make really selfish choices. When we think that career and status and money and children and marriage and even Christian jobs and positions can bring us joy, then we can really be set on a really wrong path. Um, the word of God says completely otherwise than what the world says. In Ecclesiastes 5 verse 15, it says, everyone comes naked from their mother's womb and as everyone comes, so they depart. They take nothing from their toil that they can carry in their hands. God says directly that anything that you build up here on earth, you can't take with you. So where, is our, where does our identity lie then? Who are we? You know, we've always wanted more as humans because we feel like if we get a great career, um, we get a, our marriage status like all our friends have, we have great bank accounts, then we are approved of and we are loved more. But really all it leads to is feeling numb inside or depressed or just searching for all these um, void things in our life. But the truth is, is that we are not what we do or what we achieve or what we've done wrong or right or even what others think about, think about us. That's a really big deception. Um, I believe that Satan's initial deception wasn't just about sin entering into, into our life, which was very much the theme of Adam and Eve, but it was more of, in the beginning, like a desire for more, a thirst for more knowledge or a greater identity than, than who Adam and Eve were. When Satan told Eve that she could eat from the tree of good and evil, he flat out lied to her. And he said in Genesis 3, verse 3, you will certainly not die, the serpent said to the woman. God knows that when you eat fruit from that tree, you will know things that you have never known before. Like God, you will be able to tell the difference between good and evil. You know, it wasn't Satan's presence that um, separated man from God. It was a belief in his lie. And this lie had was pretty much rooted in their identity that who they were just being in communion with God and each other wasn't quite enough that there was more for them that there was more to who they were that God was keeping from them um, Satan deceived them into thinking it wasn't enough to be a child of God and the world tells us it's not enough to just be a child of God you have to all have all of these things but it's not true being a child of God means instant access to the throne. It means comfort and peace when we ask. It means power and strength and riches and blessings. And most of all, it means eternal life. When we truly grasp our identity in Christ, then we can live in complete joy and fearlessness. You know, Satan knows that if he can um, separate our identity from that of God, then he can separate us from God. And so this is something that he weaves into our lives from a very, very young age. I want to look at Joseph as an example because he's one of my favorite um, guys in the Bible, one of my favorite stories. And I really relate to Joseph personally. And I like to refer to him as the cocky rainbow coat kid because he started his life, he walked out of his father's house feeling completely confident in who he was. He was a son of God. He was a favored child. He one day would rule over his brothers and and fulfill the call of God in his life. He was extremely confident and joyful as to who he was and all that God had for him. 
But that confidence didn't last very long. And pretty soon, this confident kid was laying in the bottom of a pit. And most of us know the story. And next thing you know, he's sold into slavery and he's sent to Egypt. And next thing you know, he's accused of rape and he's thrown in prison. And all of a sudden, this kid, who's all of a sudden knows exactly who he is, the child of God, favorite son, is, has become the lowest of the lowest. He's a slave. He's um, an accused rapist. He's a Jew in, in Egypt. You can't get any lower than that. And so in Genesis 41, Pharaoh has a dream and Joseph is called upon to interpret the dream. So picture Joseph labeled the lowest of the lowest, a slave bound in chains, smelly, ragged, an accused rapist, a Jew in Egypt. His head probably hung low um, before Pharaoh. And it says in Genesis 41 that Pharaoh sent for Joseph and he was quickly brought from the dungeon. And when he had shaved and changed his clothes, he, became, he came before Pharaoh. And when Pharaoh said to Joseph, Inasmuch as God has shown you all of this, there is no one as discerning and as wise as you. You shall be over my house and all my people shall be ruled according to your word. Only in regard to the throne will I be greater than you. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, See, I have set you over all the land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh took off his ring and he placed it in Joseph's hand and he clothed him in gar garments of fine linens and put a gold chain around his neck. Wow. Joseph went instantly from prison to being shaved, clothed, honored, robed, and decked out in gold. I just, I love the story because the part that really stood out for me was the word quickly. That God took this man from having this identity of, of shame and, and all the things that go with his circumstance into somebody being honored. And it happened very, very quickly. You know, had Joseph succumbed to the identity that perhaps the world or the other prisoners or the society was trying to place on him, I'm not so sure that the story would have turned out okay. And I have to truly believe that Joseph really hung on to who he was, who God had called him to me. He was a child of God. He was still a favored son. And so I think that really helped him to take the place that God had called him to says that we are workmanship of God. We're children of God. We're beloved. We're royalty. And no human measure can change that. You know, if you've been struggling with your identity or, and trying to figure out who you are still, doesn't matter how old you are, um, you will find all of the answers in the word of God. And that's not just a fluffy response. You really will. Because when you get to know God's character, then you be to begin to know your place in God. And you also begin to realize that being a child of God is a pretty, pretty cool place to be. I want to leave you with these scriptures, and there's so many more of these that define who we are in Christ, and, but these are some of my favorite. 1 Peter 2.9 says, You, we, are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God. Galatians 3.27-28 says, For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. I love this scripture because it gets rid of any label that we want to place upon ourselves. And God says, you are my child. 1 John 3 verse 1 to 2 says, How great is the love of the Father who has lavished on us that we should be called children of God. And then it's exclamation mark. And that is what we are. So seek the Lord with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all your soul. And you, you will soon discover who you are in Christ. Have a great day.